What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. Fun project today. You know, I make a lot of boxes. I even have a playlist devoted to box making. I make so many boxes. So today's project is, I'm gonna make a miter joint box sled. I'm gonna use three quarter inch plywood for my jig. I like to use a thick piece of plywood if I can, if I've got it in the shop. And we're gonna use one miter slot. You could use two if you want to, that's perfectly fine. It would probably add a little bit more stability, but I don't want a big jig. So I'm gonna move it over, just use the one. It gives me a little bit of space here for some work pieces, but I'm gonna have it the board just far enough over so that whenever I move my blade at 45 degrees, I will make sure that I'm cutting off the edge of my jig. So at this point, we need to work on the runners. Now there's a couple ways we can do this. We can make our own runners, which I've done. Uh, there's a couple different videos I've made on making crosscut sleds and I've talked about making my own runners. In this case, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go with some store-bought runners. I've never used these before, but I'm excited to try them out. We are gonna use these bad boys here from MicroJig. I've never used them before. I've always wanted to try it. And the good folks of our MicroJig sent these to me to give it a shot, so let's see how they go. I wanna be transparent, and like I said, I was giving these products for free to use. And you should know that. Whenever you're watching a video on YouTube and you see somebody talking about a product, there is probably a relationship there and a reason why they're talking about it. At the same time, I turn down the vast majority of stuff that's offered to me. Uh, it's stuff that you don't, you don't want. I don't want to show. I don't want the creepy skin cream. Stop messaging me, skin cream people. I don't want it. So I can promise you this. I'm not going to show you a product unless it's something that I truly wanted to try myself. And then you can see if that's something that works for you or doesn't work for you. In this case, I planned on buying these miter fences, miter gauges anyway, and then just weird timing worked out that they contacted me and asked me to try these out. So it just works out that way. So you can see me try these, but at the same time, if you don't want to do this, you want to make your own runners. I got lots of videos that show exactly how to do that. Hey, it looks like we got some, oh, this is cool, we got some plans. I, I thought there'd be instructions, but there's actually uh, plans on how to make a jig. That's cool. These have two pieces. There's a male and a female end, it looks like, with kind of a wedge, and they go on top of each other and then slide to fit your miter gauge slot. That's kind of cool. There's a couple bolts here that when you screw them together, I'm gonna leave enough play so that this can slide. And then we'll be able to adjust this so we have zero play in our sled. This is a big reason why I wanted to try this out because even though I've made my own runners a million times, over the years, things change, there's movement, that kind of stuff, and they end up becoming snug or too loose and then I end up remaking my jig or my runners. So I wanted to give these a try and see if this will help solve that problem. We slide this little stop block into place and tighten this guy up so that he doesn't move on us. Now, we need to put a couple of nickels down. I highly recommend good old fashioned American nickels that are made in America. And then we bump this guy up against our stop block. Then we can push our miter bar together Tighten down these bolts. Sweet! There's zero play in that. That's awesome. Like I said, I want my jig to be slightly off center from where the blade is, so I'll set it here on my table saw and take a square and mark roughly where the center of the miter slot is. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. It looks like there's three bolts that will hold the miter bar onto the jig. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole in the center on my line, in the center of the board, and then it looks like it's four inches on center up and four inches on center down, and that'll take care of these other two holes. So I need to go over to the drill press, drill some holes. Now we can put our board on here and fold it down. Oh man, sweet. Before I started working on this, I made sure that my piece of plywood here is perfectly square. And that's gonna be a huge help for getting everything lined up because ultimately we're gonna have to put a fence here on this backside. 
And trying to get that fence lined up 90 degrees to a blade that is tilted at 45 degrees can be a little bit tricky. But if we have a good square board now, it's gonna make this process a whole lot easier. I'm gonna raise my blade up and then I'm gonna register the back of my jig to the blade. And I'm a little bit off. So now what I can do is I can adjust these bolts in the miter bar until that's at 90 degrees. Now that that's all together, it's time to work on a fence for it. I wanna go simple. I'm gonna use a couple pieces of three quarter inch plywood and glue those together. And that should give me a good fence. I like to have my fence about four inches tall. I don't know what it is about that height, but it just seems to be really good for me. But it's completely subjective. You can have it as tall as you want. Here are my boards that are gonna end up being my front fence. I need to glue these together and I wanna make sure that they're perfectly flat. So to do that, I'm gonna take some wax paper. I'm gonna put it right here on my table saw and I'm gonna use my table saw bar, fence bar guide thing to make sure it's flat. While the fence is drying, let's talk a bit about getting better cuts using better clamping. I've talked about this a little bit in the past. I like to make sure I'm using a stop lock whenever I'm making cuts on my cross cut sled. And that's because when the blade hits the wood, it's very possible for the wood to shift a little bit if you're trying to hold it, even if you don't notice it. And in the past, I've had times where my cuts have been slightly off. I thought it was my jig, my fence, my blade. Nope, it was because I was freehanding it. So I always use a stop lock and I wanna have my fence tall enough that I can do that. Now with this one, we're gonna be doing small parts. This is for making like boxes. Well, the ends of boxes usually are only a couple inches long. So you're gonna get a stop lock in there to put your piece in, but then you also have no room to hold. And the closer my hand gets to the blade, the sketchier it gets. So to solve that problem, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a couple dovetail clamps. We're gonna go over to the router table. I'm gonna cut a dovetail groove across my jig. I can then slide this in, clamp my piece down, good to go. Fence is all dry and I went ahead and cut all the sides on the table saw so it's nice and clean. But before I attach it to the jig, this inside face here, I'm gonna cut just a tiny little notch, a little shallow notch right on the inside face. And that's gonna be a, just a relief for sawdust because you don't want any sawdust build up in that little corner there whenever you're cutting and it throws off your cuts. Time to screw the fence onto the jig. And to do this really simple, I'm gonna just line it with this back edge here because we made sure that the front edge was at 90 degrees to the blade. So the back edge should be at 90 degrees. But if it's not, there's ways to adjust that later. So I'm just gonna drill some holes underneath it, countersink some screws, screw this fence into place, and then we'll do a test cut and see how it works. I did a practice cut and it looked like I'm not exactly at 90 degrees. I'm a little bit off. That's not a big deal though. I loosened up two of the three bolts. I'll hold the runner onto the jig and then shifted the jig slightly to the left, retightened the bolts back up and did another practice cut. And the results are this thing looks like it's dead on. I'm really excited about having this jig in the shop because I know that it's gonna help me to crank out a lot of boxes and I just really dig making boxes. I don't really know why, something about boxes. I don't, I enjoy them. So hopefully this video inspires you to get in the shop, make some jigs for yourself for whatever purposes they are. So if you like this content, please subscribe to the channel. I put out videos every week on all kinds of things. And until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.